Welcome back. This lecture supports your learning during Module 7 of TECM 5190. I want to help you prepare to use slide decks to report industry research. So first, I'll help you distinguish between slides for presenting and those for reading. Second, I'll show you a sample slide deck for reading. And then third, most of our time I'm going to spend using that sample slide deck to explain how to effectively report the results of research in industry. This is directly um, as a way to help you get ready for presenting your A-B test results. So let's do it. We'll start by talking about how slides are used in the workplace. So which of these presentations would you prefer to attend? Most people automatically think the one on the right will be boring, while the one on the left might be interesting based solely on the slides that are projected. One of the cardinal rules of great presentations is that the visual should supplement, never distract from what the presenter is saying and doing. Many times in the business world, people are asked to send their slides in advance or to share their slides after a presentation. I want you to take a second and look at this quote from Steve Bowman. Steve supports what may be a novel idea to you. There are two different types of slides. In your assigned reading, Nancy Duarte, arguably one of the most influential presentation coaches in the business, introduces you to the idea of slide docs which are also called slide decks or sometimes ebooks. These are meant to be read, not to be projected during a live presentation. That means you probably need two sets of slides, one for reading and one for projecting during a presentation. You should know enough about effective presentation to understand why their design should be different based on how the audience consumes them. You should have seen some sample slides for reading from Duarte. Let's take a look at another sample deck for reading now. The sample slide deck I'll be showing you was created by a team of my former students for a project that reported results of an intensive study of a team leader. The goal was to help the leader understand their strengths and weaknesses based on data collected by the students from members of the leader's team. The students used a PowerPoint template from Duarte. I provided that template and two others to you on Canvas for your own use. Some of you may be talented designers and could create your own deck. Well, that's not me, and it wasn't a good use of time for these particular students. Their entire deck consisted of 29 slides, one cover page, one table of contents, six section dividers, and 21 pages with text, illustrations, and graphics. Note also that even the most text-heavy slide is more heavily visual than a typical written report with relatively few words per page. A quick view of any one of these slides should make it clear they were not created as a supplement to an oral presentation. Instead, they were designed to be read. Now I'll use the slides from that sample deck to explain how to report research results in industry and point out the differences from what you probably learned to do in school. IMRED is a common acronym for describing the overall structure of a research report. It stands for Introduction, Methods, Results, and Discussion. While all four types of information are important in both industry and school, their relative importance is different. That has implications both for how much information about each topic are needed and for how that information is arranged. I'll say more about this on the following slides, but I should tell you now that you're far more likely to see those words as the complete headings in an academic paper than in an industry report. What you see in this sample are six pages of background instead of an introduction and a method section. Six pages headed your strengths and your opportunities instead of a discussion section. And 11 pages of additional results for a results section. Let's look at these in a little more detail. 
The sample deck has six pages of background instead of two separate sections headed introduction and methods. Because of the nature of this particular slide deck, the background section had to accomplish two goals. First, to clearly state the goal of the research and the methods by which the writers collected and analyzed data. Second, to explain just enough about how the writers analyzed and collected that data to persuade the audience the writers knew what they were doing. The first content slide in the background section included a short summary of the goal. All industry research occurs because there's a problem to solve. Usually the problem's well known before anyone is allowed to spend time doing the research. But if some portion of the audience is unaware of the problem or something about it's controversial, then the slide deck would need to include more information about the problem that led to the research goal. The slide also includes a short description of the methods used to collect and analyze research data. The next two content slides in the background section summarize research measures, the ideas used to make sense out of the data that was collected. In an academic report, there'd be far more details about all of what appears in the background section, but in industry, the audience wants just enough information to decide whether to trust the conclusions that researchers reach. The next section of the slide deck consisted of six pages headed your strengths and your opportunities instead of a discussion section. Note, in industry, writers must get to the conclusions very quickly. That's the entire point of industry research. If you have a journalism background, you learned about the inverted pyramid for arranging information. You know, start with the bottom line and then give the details. Industry audiences want information in that arrangement with the bottom line up front. They may or may not continue on to consider details after they know the ending. In the sample slide deck we're viewing, there were two types of conclusions. The writers presented the positive conclusions first. In the sample slide deck, two strengths were described, each occupying a single page. The sample slide deck also made two recommendations for change. Each occupied a single page. To ensure the audience both understands and is persuaded to accept recommendations based on research, three kinds of information should appear with each recommendation. First, specific results demonstrating the basis of that recommendation, an explanation of how or why those results support the need for change, and finally, some kind of a validity statement that demonstrates the quality of the results and conclusion. The final section of the slide deck consisted of 11 pages of additional results. These were placed last, like in an appendix, because these details are typically of least interest to the most people uh, among an industry audience. This portion of the report may in fact be longer than any of the other sections. This was the case in the sample slide deck, which devoted 16 of its 29 total slides to additional survey results. I know it's often painful for writers, but the bulk of their research results should probably appear last in industry. Many industry readers will never look at them, but a few might study them very carefully, so they can't be omitted. The writers of the sample slide deck presented some of their results in data tables. They presented others in data charts, like this one. And they also presented some in other types of illustrations. Note that the writers did not expect readers to guess at the conclusions for the data they presented. Those are stated clearly. All right, to summarize my guidelines for presenting research in industry, do three things. One, condense the introduction and methods and possibly combine them into a single background section. Two, present conclusions and recommendations next, starting with any positives and including enough supporting data and interpretation to persuade the audience. And three, display your results and other details last in tables, charts, and other graphics, and remember to include succinct interpretations or conclusions. I can't wait to see what you create. Good luck. Mm -hmm.